All right, so in this one, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at problem 4.54 in your book. Uh, we have basically a two block system with some net force acting up, but it says the two blocks in this figure are connected by a heavy uniform rope. So uniform means that no matter where I go, it's the same thickness uh, with a mass of four kilograms. An upward force of 200 newtons is applied as shown. Draw the three free body diagrams, one for the six kilogram block, one for the four kilogram rope, and another one for the five kilogram block. For each force, indicate what body exerts that force. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at each individual. And so the six kilogram block first. So I'm going to draw a little dot right here to represent the center of mass of that object. Okay. The very top of it feels force F acting straight up. Okay. Because we're on earth, we have weight pulling down. So I'm going to call this object one. So this would be M one G. That's the weight down. And then down below, he feels this guy pulling down right here. So I'm just going to call that F T one. And so that's the tension on the top part of the rope. I'll just go ahead and say that's the top part. Okay, now because it's a heavy rope, the tension changes or varies as we move through it. But, but just right at that point, he feels the very top of that, uh, that rope. And so I have three forces that act on him. There's no normal force because I'm not in contact with anything. And then there's no friction because I'm not in contact with the surface. And so that's my free body diagram. I drew that over to the side just so we could see it a little bit better. But I should try to draw them closer together. So let me go ahead and just move that over here and see if we can just different color. And so that would be F T one. That's right there. That's that guy right there. Okay. So now let's look at the five kilogram object. Uh, excuse me, the four kilogram rope. I'll say the four kilogram rope rope, and that'll be uh, object two. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the rope as one whole thing. Sorry about that. So I'm going to look at the, the rope as one full thing. So I'm going to think of this as one object. You think of it as like a block. Right there, there's a tension at the top and a tension at the bottom, and then there's weight of the entire block. So if I look at that, there is um, the tension that's trying to pull up at the very top. That's FT1. That's at the top. All right, there is M2G, M2G, because that's the rope. And then there's FT2, and that is at the bottom. Now, we know we're accelerating up. And so I didn't draw my free body diagram to scale, but FT1 should be greater than M2G and FT2. And so that is the, uh, that's at the bottom. And what's supplying that tension really is the, uh, the bottom block. Okay. And so that's what, like, that's, that's kind of what's helping to supply that, but um, that's at the bottom. And so that's my free body diagram should just include those three forces right there. Now we have the five kilogram block which I'll call object three. And from his perspective, he just, he's right here. He feels the earth pulling him down and he feels tension pulling him up and that's it. So we have FT2 going up, FT2, and we have M3G pulling down. That's the weight of that block. Okay, and so we, we take a look at all of that. So that's the free body diagram for all of that. Now it says, what is the acceleration of the system? Okay, so now we're looking at part B. Well, here's the thing. From this guy's perspective, maybe that's you pulling it up, maybe it's something else, but from that guy's perspective, he's got to get the whole thing to accelerate at a constant rate. He doesn't feel a six kilogram block before below him. He feels a six plus a four plus five kilogram block below him. So in a sense, he basically is trying to accelerate the entire mass of the system. And so for the system perspective, if I look at the whole thing as one big object, so here we go, here we go, red, let's make it a little thicker. This whole thing can be thought of as one object right? One object right there. So if that's the case, I could think of that as, so we think of this whole thing as 15 kilogram and it could be just like, it would act the same way as a 15 kilogram block. And so for the system, what I'm looking at is this is for the entire system. This is like one big block with F pulling up and this is 15 kilograms right there. And so we have F pulling it up. Okay. And then we have big mg, where this is the total mass, that's big m, mg pulling it down, and we're accelerating up. And that's really only the forces acting on it. And so I have some of the forces is equal to ma. I don't have to worry about x or the y direction. You know, it's just one direction. It's just the y. So I could say y, but I don't need to worry about that. I don't have to worry about the x direction because there's no x directional forces. And so if I pick up to be positive, then I get that the applied force up minus the entire weight of the system is equal to the leftover amount that causes the acceleration. And that should be big M, I'll just erase the whole thing. That's big M A. And so the 
if I'm trying to find the acceleration of the system, I'm solving for A right here, I'm going to divide both sides by M, and so I get that A is equal to this big F minus the big M G all over M. And so I could plug in, I get 200 newtons minus 15 kilograms times gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, all over the entire mass of the system, which is 15 kilograms. If I do that, I get an answer of 3.53 meters per second squared. And so that's the acceleration of the system. But what's really cool is because they're all connected together. I know I kind of ruined all that right there, so let me erase all this right here. So um, because that's a system, this block, this block, this rope, and this block are all moving at the exact same rate. And so that's the acceleration for each individual piece. Okay, and so that's the acceleration of the system. It says, what is the tension at the top? of the heavy rope. So I'm interested in finding the tension there. So I need to solve for something where I have FT1. So there's that there or that there. Now, the reason I don't want to do this is because I don't know the tension at the bottom. That is an unknown. And so I think it makes sense for us to use this guy with now knowing that acceleration. So what I'm going to do is let me re redraw that free body diagram down here. So we have the force up F. We know at the top of the rope, FT1 is pulling down. And we also have M1G where that is the six kilogram block that's doing that but we're accelerating up and so some of the forces is equal to ma and this is for block one or the top block and so the net force is f minus m1g minus ft1 is equal to m1a because we're only interested in finding the net force on block one okay the thing i'm solving for is the tension at the top so i'm going to move this guy and this guy over and so i'm going to get that f T1 is equal to F minus M1A minus M1G. If I wanted to keep, you know, isolating or moving variables around, I can, but I'm going to just go ahead and plug in. So that's a 200 Newton force up minus M1, which is the six kilograms times the acceleration, which we just got to be 3.53 meters per second squared minus six kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, yes, gravity. So that's what I should get. And if I multiply all that together I should get 120 newtons roughly and so that's the tension in the top part of the rope and we know that the tension at the top is going to be the greatest right here that's the greatest FT1 is a maximum in the rope because as I go down there's less and less rope below to have to support that spot so any any tension lower should be less and so we could actually find FT2 if we wanted um, by plugging into this, knowing that the acceleration up is that. Um, and so we can get FT2, which should be the lowest. Do that. So we'll just take a look at it just real quick right here. I'll do it in green so we can see it. So my, my net force on that guy should equal MA. And it's just for this guy right here. And so if I do that, I get FT2 minus M3G is equal to M3A. Okay. And then I get um, F. T2 is equal to, if I move that over, it becomes positive. M3 is common for both, so that's just A plus G. If I plug in 5 right there, 5 kilograms, I plug in my acceleration of 3.53 meters per second squared there, and then, of course, gravity. If I do that, let me go ahead and do that real quick. So I get uh, 5 times the quantity, 9.8 plus 3.53. I get about 66.7 pretty close to that. So I get 66.7. So 66, excuse me, 66.7 uh, would be my Newtons. That's at the bottom. Okay. I didn't actually ask for that, but that's, that's one thing that we have. All right. And then it says to, um, it says to um, go ahead and do what is the tension at the midpoint of the rope? And so if I do the tension in the midpoint of the rope, now we're talking about right there at the midpoint. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to think of this now as its own individual block and another individual block. So I can think of it as four different pieces, I guess. And so if I look at just the free body diagram of this guy here, of, of just the top one. So if I look at that, then FT1 is pulling up at the top, FT1. What's pulling down at the bottom right there is FT mid, so FT middle. And then there's also weight that's pulling down, but it's M half the rope times gravity. So let me redraw that down here where I have some space. So let me do that again. I have FT1 pointing up, FT1 pointing up. There is MG, but that's half the mass of the rope 
because we're talking about half the mass. So remember, each chunk can be thought of as two kilograms because it's uniform. So that guy right there is being pulled down by gravity by, by mg, but that's half the mass. And then that guy's being pulled down by mg, but that's half the mass too. And so I get that. And then I also have ft middle, but we're still accelerating up. And so the net force on half the rope is equal to ma. If I'm just looking from this perspective, half the rope, then I get ft1 minus mg uh, minus FTM equals MA. And remember, this mass is half the rope. So FT midway is equal to FT1 minus MA minus MG. And so if I plug that in, FT1, we got to be 120 newtons minus the mass, which is 2 kilograms, times the acceleration of 3.53 meters per second squared minus the mass, which is still two kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And we plug that in. So 120 minus two times 3.53 minus two times 9.8. And I get 93.3. So 93.3-ish newtons is Ft at the midpoint. Another way to do it, excuse me right there. Another way to do it would be to go up here and look at this this part here and now that we know ft2 from from solving it we, we didn't know that before but i went ahead and just added that then we could think of the bottom part of the rope we could think of the bottom part of the rope as instead of that free body diagram what's pulling us up is ft mid what's pulling us down is still mg but it's still half the rope because it's the bottom half and then what's also pulling down at the bottom of it is ft2 so if we did that i would get you know some of the forces is equal to ma I get Ft at the midpoint uh, minus Mg, that's half the rope, minus Ft2, which we solved for up above, which I think was about 66.7, is equal to Ma, that's half the mass. If I solve for it that way, I should still get 93.3, which is pretty cool. If I take the 120 and the 66.7, I'm hoping this works out, but if I take those two values right there, right there and right there, then if I average them, then that would be the midpoint tension. And you can see as we move down the rope, the tension is getting less because it's supporting less of the mass. And so there you guys go. If you have questions, you can come see me about that.